Hello class, welcome to lesson 2.8, which is all about using powers of 10 to estimate quantities. Okay, so by the end of this lesson, you should be able to estimate large and small quantities using a power of 10. So let's get started with our first example. We are going to practice estimating very large quantities, okay? So we have Janelle is comparing the estimated populations of Japan and China. The estimated population of Japan is 126,818,019 people. The estimated population of China is shown. <coughs> Excuse me. How can Janelle compare the two populations more easily? Okay, so um, we have Japan. I'm just going to rewrite the number 126,818,019. All right. And then for China, we have, let's see, for China, we have, that would be 1 billion. 402,941,487 people. Okay, so right away you can see that China is bigger, right? We have um, a much larger number over there. But we're going to practice using something, the powers of 10, to be able to estimate like about how much bigger is China than Japan. And <coughs> excuse me, for this lesson, we're actually going to keep working our way up to being able to say how much bigger, like how many times bigger is something than another thing, or smaller. Okay. Right now, we are going to just introduce kind of how to write these numbers a different way. And that's going to lead us into our next couple of lessons over the um, upcoming days. So we have Japan, 126,818,019. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at where's the first number, and I'm going to round. So I'm going to turn everything else to zeros. So I want to look and see if I were to change everything else to zeros, is this going to stay a 1, or would I bump it up to 2? And the way that I know is I look to see would a 2 change that 1? And the answer is no. A 2 would not have me round up. So now I'm going to leave it at 100 million people. Okay, so that's how I'm going to estimate the population of Japan. Then I'm going to go over here and I am going to do about the same thing with China. So I look at this leading digit here. It's a 1. I look right next to it. I have a 4. Does 4 change that 1? It does not. It has to be 5 or higher in order to change the digit. So I'm going to leave the one and I'm going to change everything else to zeros. And this is a good skill to use when you're just estimating, right? Like we're not looking for an exact answer here. We're just estimating. Um, so the first step that you will do in all of these problems is rewrite the number where you just have a single non-zero digit. Okay, now I'm going to take that one and I'm going to write it and I'm going to say times 10 and then this is where some things may be a little new. I'm going to count how many zeros do I have. So I have three, I have three more, and then I have two. So three, six, eight. So another way of writing Japan's population is one times 10 to the eighth. You might be wondering why am I saying times 10 to the something? And the reason for that is when you multiply by 10, all it does is it moves the decimal point, right? Like if I were to have the number 1 and I wrote it as a decimal, if I were to multiply it by 10, I would now have 10 like this. And if I were to multiply that by 10, again, the decimal place would move, right? I would have 100. And if I multiply by 10 again, I would have 1,000. So you can see that multiplying by 10 is just moving the decimal point. All right, so I'm going to erase that. And now I'm going to do the same thing for China. So I have that 1 times 10 to the, I have 3, 6, 9. So I have 1 times 10 to the 9th. 
<clears throat> then what you can do is you can compare your two answers. So 1 times 10 to the 8th and 1 times 10 to the 9th. Well, I know that 1 is going to be, you know, the same on both sides, but then having a bigger exponent means that my number is going to be bigger. So I am going to say that China is the larger country or the larger, has the larger population. Okay, so I would say something like China has the largest population. And my work is going to be necessary to kind of make that argument. So China has the largest population. Now, what you're going to do on this next slide is you are going to estimate um, this problem. We have light travels 299,792,458 meters per second. We also know sound travels at 332 meters per second. Use a power of 10 to compare the speed of light to the speed of sound. Okay, so I want you to practice writing out your work, kind of like I did on the last slide, and then just do a simple sentence, which one is faster? Good luck. All right, so hopefully when you practice writing it out, your work looks something like what I have up on the screen right now, and you said that light travels faster. Okay, so we've practiced very large quantities. Now let's practice with very small quantities. We have Mateus used a laser to measure the average thickness of a human hair and got 0.0001763 of a meter. A sheet of paper is about 0.013 meters thick. How do the two compare? Okay, so again, I'm going to do roughly the same thing where I end up rounding. It looks a little bit different in this instance just because, oops, not papers, but paper. It looks a little bit different in this instance because now what I'm going to do is I am going to say I have 0, 0.000. I look, is this 7 going to change that one? And it is. So I would say 2. Okay. I do not have to write zeros for those digits right there. I get a stop once I hit a number for the small quantities. All right. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the paper. I have 0. 0, and then I see I have a digit right here, so I look and see, will this 3 make that 1 change or will it stay? And the 3 is going to make it stay, okay? So now I have my numbers for my um, hair and paper, the estimations. This is where we're going to do roughly the same thing that we did before, it's just going to be one slight change. So I'm going to take that digit for hair, which is 2. I'm going to say 2 times 10 to the, this time, I'm going to use a negative sign. So when you have those decimals, you're going to end up using a negative to represent that your decimal is actually moving the opposite direction and your number is getting smaller instead of bigger. Okay. So if I were to continue on in order to find that number, I have to see how many spaces would I have to move it. So it's one, two, three, four. So I'd say two times 10 to the negative fourth. For the paper, I have the digit one and I would say times 10 to the, and then I have to move it one, two. So 10 to the negative second power. All right, so if I were to look at those, I have 2 times 10 to the negative 4th, and I have 1 times 10 to the negative, excuse me, 2nd. With that, now I get to compare. So I would look at these two digits, and I would say, hmm, which one's going to be bigger? 2 times 10 to the negative 4th, or is it going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 2nd? Remember when negatives, when we're working with negatives, the smaller the digit itself, the bigger the number. 
for negatives. So we know that paper is thicker than hair. Another statement you could say is that hair is thinner than paper. All right. Now, this is our last example for today. How does the gross, uh, we're going <laughs> to find how many times as much. Okay, so we finally get to say like, it is 20 times as much bigger or something like that. Okay, so how does the gross domestic product or the GDP of Canada compare to that of the United States? So my first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say Canada. And with that, I look at my first two digits to see, okay, I have a 1 followed by a 7. So is it going to stay a 1 or is it going to change to a 2? Well, the answer is it will change to a 2. So I'm going to say 2 times 10 raised to the, now I have to figure out how many digits would follow that very first one. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I have 2 times 10 to the 15th for Canada. And then for the United States, we have a leading digit of 1 followed by a 7. So again, that's going to bump up to a 2 times 10 raised to the I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. All right, so I have Canada was 2 times 10 to the 15th. The United States is 2 times 10 to the 16th. What we are going to do is just like looking at that one, I can see, okay, the U.S. is bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write... Um, the U.S. on top, and I'm going to divide it by Canada's number in order to figure out how many times bigger the GDP of the U.S. is. So I'm going to say 2 times 10 to the 16th over 2 times 10 to the 15th. All right, now this is where you get to do things a little differently. What we're going to do is we're going to look at just those regular numbers first of all. What is 2 divided by 2? Two? 2 divided by 2 is 1. And then I have that multiplication symbol, right? I have times on top and bottom. And then I'm going to look at my powers of 10. I have 10 to the 16th over 10 to the 15th. So remember, we would subtract so 16 minus 15 is 10 to the first power. And now if I were to actually calculate that out, 1 times 10 to the first power is the same thing as saying 1 times 10, which is just saying 10. So we would say the United States um, GDP is about 10 times greater or bigger than Canada's. And that would be my final answer, okay? So hopefully you see kind of the connection. We've been building up to this throughout the lesson. But the first thing, you just estimate and write it in this form as a power of 10. And then you divide, okay, in order to see what is our answer, excuse me, going to be. Now, this very last problem is for you to solve on your own. There are approximately 1 billion, 20 million cars in the world. The number of cars in the United States is approximately 239,800,000 um, cars. So compare the number of cars in the world to that in the United States. So for this problem, you can see that it lists the world first. So that tells me what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the world divided by the United States. Okay, so go ahead and solve this one on your own. Good luck. All right, for this problem, hopefully 
you decided that the world's um, cars, there was one times 10 to the ninth, and the USA had two times 10 to the eighth. And when you divided them, you had one times 10 to the ninth divided by two times 10 to the eighth. One divided by two is one half, or if you wrote 0 0.5, that's fine, times, and then 10 to the ninth divided by 10 to the eighth is 10 to the first. So one half times 10 to the first is just one half times 10, which is five. If you have questions about that, please be sure to reach out for some help. And then this very last slide here is made just for you as a nice little summary, okay? So feel free, take a screenshot of that if you would like. Um, remember, very small numbers are the, gonna be the ones with the negative exponents. Very big numbers are gonna have those positive exponents. If you have questions about this or anything else, please be sure to reach out for some help. I'm happy to help you. Have a great day.